people, the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side. Welcome back, everyone. Today on This Week in Cincinnati, we are speaking with the two major party candidates for Ohio's second congressional district. In the first segment, we spoke with Congressman Brad Wenstrup. So joining us right now for this segment is opponent, his opponent, that is, Democrat Jill Schiller. Thank you so much for being here, Jill. Hey, Tanya, it. thank you. Let's start with what I started with him. We have had multiple bombs, at least a dozen, sent to many people, um, mostly Democrats or people who seem to be not in favor with President Trump. It seems uh, such an ugly time in our country. What can you do if you are elected um, to bring down the temperature in this country and maybe try to unite us a little more? You know, we have been at cross purposes for so long. I think the time has come to elect people who know how to reach across the aisle, who are willing to build bridges to help get things done. And it's, that's how we can go about returning to this civility that we've lost so long ago. I think it's so important to set that example for our kids and really show people that Americans are united as opposed to so divided. So how do we know that you can build bridges? Well, my professional background has featured that a lot. Um, you know, I, I started at DCI here in town, downtown Cincinnati Incorporated, and a core focus there is getting people to put aside their differences to come together to make downtown a better place to live, work, and play. I was able to do that. Um, we also, I founded a children's literacy and creative writing nonprofit in Philadelphia. Same sort of thing, to make anything happen, to build something from nothing, you are asking people to come together from different backgrounds. This district, District 2, it is enormous. It is nearly 100 miles from one end to the other. We're talking um, d very vast in different areas, you know, Hyde Park all the way to Appalachia. So how do you meet the needs of all of your constituents? Well, we actually find that the needs are very similar throughout the district, whether you're in Mount Healthy or in Portsmouth. The biggest concerns that we hear are about health care. You know, people are terrified that they're going to lose protections for their pre-existing conditions, that they're not going to be able to afford their plans. and it's all due to the fact that the Republicans have kicked the mandate out from the ACA. Uh, we need to do better to make sure that every American can have access to quality, affordable health care. Let's get out to more health care in just a minute. But right now, let me talk about this. The federal debt, the deficit, it's just soaring at this point. One, does this concern you? And what would you do to support, what would you support to get that under control? Or uh, do you believe that we should have tax hikes? And if so, what kind and on what? I'm very concerned by the deficit, of course. And the first thing we need to do is repeal this wealthy welfare of a tax handout to the ultra-rich and big corporations. They don't need this money. They're not using it in the way that it was sold to us when we were told about it, which is to say that we are having a banner year for stock buybacks. We are not seeing greater employment, certainly not in the second district. We are not seeing any kind of fiscal benefit. And we have a ballooning debt that's going to be saddled you know, onto our kids. Uh, the party of fiscal responsibility is clearly not the party people thought it was. And the time has come to get this under control. So do you have any specific ideas of what you would like to do? Sure. So first, I'd like to take back this, this handout. Um, I think that we can rework the tax code in a way that really will lower taxes for corporations, but encourage them to do their business here. And we've had plans like that that have been ignored in the past. And so I think it's time to take a look at that and, and re-examine it. So let's go back to healthcare now. No one seems real happy about it. Democrats, Republicans, everyone seems um, to be stuck. So are there any fresh ideas, new ideas you could bring to the table that would help unstuck everyone and get something done on healthcare? Well, I think the way we look at it is part of the problem. You know, I like to say you don't have to be employed to send your kid to a public school and you don't have to be employed to have electricity in your home. I mean, you need to be able to pay your bills, but you can have it. And these are things the government did, both because it was the right thing to do, but also because it was a way to get a more stable, more productive workforce. And so the idea that we have employers footing the bill for health care for their employees, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you could, if you look at what employers spend on that, the vast sums of money, if we could free that up for them to reinvest in their new businesses for more jobs, for more products. And at the same time, you look at the federal government where we have the VA and CMS, this infrastructure already there. It's something that I think we should be doing as a capitalist investment, as a way to get a stable, more productive workforce, and also because it's the human thing to do. So depending on the day, there is thought that the Democrats will regain control of at least the House during the midterm elections. And if that does happen, that many expect that there will be a series of investigations into the Trump White House. Um, 
How important a priority is it for you to begin investigations into the, the, the White House and the administration? Should it be a priority? And what instead, if not, what should be the priority? So my first priority is going to be fixing the problems that we have here at home which means addressing the 70,000 people on the ACA expansion, the counties in our district that have unemployment of 7%. The first thing that I want to do is, is help fix those things. Congress certainly needs to regain its role as an over, a provider of oversight. And so I think that that's important to have the checks and balances as was written in the Constitution. Um, but we should not lose sight of what the most important things are, and that's representing the people who elect us. But isn't it important to investigate those things from the, uh, the White House and the administration? Is it? Is it? I think it's. I think it's certainly important and something that we need to to do as well. But I think from a first priority, it's really got to be about the people. You spent time in the Obama White House in the Office of Management and Budget. So how does that affect your priorities? Should you be elected? Well, I think it. It was a really good training ground in learning to make government more efficient and more effective, and to try to get it to deliver more services for more people and less money. Um, it's a training that I've taken with me into non the nonprofit world and the business world, and it's you know something that I think will give me a bit of an edge in helping to navigate our our overly large system. A lot of people criticize Republicans for voting almost always with President Trump and his wishes. Uh, but let's say you know you were you did work for um, in the Obama administration. If you were a Congressperson at that time, do you think you would have voted primarily with President Obama? I think you need to vote primarily with what is best for the people of your district, and that's something that we've seen too little of recently. Um, if you look back to 2008, 2009, there were a lot of Congress people who took votes because they felt that the ACA was the right thing to do, and they took that vote knowing it would most likely send them home in the next election. I think we are seeing too few people willing to do what they know is right for their people, their electorate, their constituents, and too many people who are bowing to pressure. How do you differ? from the, the general Democrats platform, how do you differ? Well, certainly in terms of foreign relations and international relations, I think that we, um, we have a real space in the world as a leader, and I think we've been walking back from that. Uh, certainly leaving these international agreements, people don't know whether they can count on the word of the U.S. anymore or not, enemies or friends, and I think that it's very clear that we need to reestablish our role as the leader of the free world. You have made healthcare a focus of your campaign. We don't have a lot of time left, but you favor a government plan for people who can't get private insurance. So tell me more about that plan. What does that look like for you know anyone sitting at home right now watching? So essentially, first, it requires we'll put the mandate back into the ACA, but we'll expand Medicaid to make sure that people don't fall into that hole. Um, the plan was to have the Medicaid expansion be adopted by every state so that people would not fall into that hole, and we understand the danger point there. And then to work from there with a team of experts on transitioning to a position where everybody can have a very good health care program. Thank you so much. Jill Schiller, the Democratic challenger for the 2nd Congressional District here in Ohio. We appreciate your time. Great. Thank you, Tanya. And there are two other official candidates, the race for Ohio's 2nd Congressional District. They are write-in candidate David Baker and James Condit Jr., who is on the ballot as the Green Party candidate. But there's a strange twist here. The Green Party says it does not endorse Condit and, in fact, condemns his positions on many issues. Instead, the Green Party is backing the writing candidate, David Baker. Condit is listed on the Green Party ticket because he did collect enough petition signatures to get on the ballot as its candidate. Under Ohio law, he does not have to be endorsed by the party. This week in Cincinnati is coming right back. Stay with us. The people, the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side.